it's Sunday afternoon. That means it must be time for the Money Show. And this is Harry Brown. So glad to be back with you on this March 6, 2005. And for this hour, we'll be talking about the economy, investments, your finances, anything having to do with money. And we have a special guest uh, today, Ted Anderson uh, from Midas Resources, one of the sponsors on my shows, the political show on Saturday night and this show on Sunday as well as a sponsor in other areas of Genesis uh, Communications Network. And Ted will be with us in just a few minutes. Before we get to that, however, I did get a question a while back from Greg out in cyberspace who says, I learned this week of TLT, an in-share, uh, pardon me, an i-share, which means an, an exchange-traded fund, for treasuries greater than 20 years, and he asked me to look into it, which I did. First of all, an exchange-traded fund is different from a mutual fund in that a mutual fund you purchase directly from the fund itself, and it just simply issues new shares. And those new shares do not water down the value of the other shares because the money you have invested in the fund adds to the assets of the fund so that the share price remains as it was before. Now, exchange-traded funds, however, are funds that are actually purchased through a broker as you would purchase common stock. The uh, certain amount of shares had, were issued initially, and then the fund went on the exchange to be traded uh, among people who want to do it. And the size of the fund does not increase that way except through appreciation of the assets that it purchases in the open market. And this TLT, which is the uh, ticker symbol, is for the Lehman uh, 20-year-plus bond fund. And I looked into it. It just came on the market a couple of years ago, and it really is exactly what I had been hoping for for 25 years. As you know, I think that the ideal portfolio, uh, to the best of my knowledge, is to have your money split four ways between stocks, bonds, gold, and cash. And the bonds need to be in long-term treasury bonds. Treasury bonds to eliminate the risk, the credit risk, not the market risk, but the credit risk, because the treasury can tax or print whatever it needs to pay the principal and interest, uh, which a private corporation can't do. And despite my feelings about government and the U.S. federal government in particular, I advise having long-term treasury bonds. Now, Generally speaking, uh, people can buy those treasury bonds directly through a broker or even some commercial banks, but some people just don't have the money to invest very much directly in bonds, and I'm continually asked, isn't there a mutual fund that can do it? But no, there was no mutual fund. Any long-term bond fund was made up of corporates, and almost any bond fund on the market is managed in the sense that the fund managers try to determine whether they think interest rates are going up or down, and they change the maturities, uh, at least the average maturity that they have, in order to conform to their view of whether interest rates are rising or falling. If they think interest rates are falling, they will have long-term bonds. If they think interest rates are rising, they will shorten the maturities of their bonds. Now, however, this Lehman Fund is pledged to have nothing shorter than 20 years maturity. And the longest bond that you can buy right now is one that is 26 years to maturity, February of 2031. So that 20-year pledge is very valuable, and 99% of its assets are in treasury bonds of 20 years or greater. Now, if you have some site on the web where you go to find information about uh, bonds, stocks, mutual funds, anything else, the ticker st symbol is TLT. And for those who don't know a place to go look, I will put on the 
archives, uh, pardon me, the radio links page of my website, I'll put a link to get you to Yahoo's explanation of this particular fund, including its track record and so on. The track record, of course, is very short because the fund just came into existence two years ago. But you can get the basic information there. And I uh, think that this is a very good idea. It is not as good as buying the bonds directly themselves, but it is a lot better than using a corporate bond fund or any other mutual fund that I know of on the market. It is This fund is better than using any of those other funds, quite a bit better. So I'm very, very pleased that this came into existence, and I am very pleased that Greg happened to find it and brought it to my attention. And if you know anything about any investment alternative possibility way of implementing the permanent portfolio concept that you think I may not know about, I will welcome any email that gives me information. And the address, just go, to, uh, just email me at question at harrybrown.org, and I will get your email, and I will be grateful for it. Uh, that link will be on the site by the end of this show. I, it is not up there now, but it will be. Now, let me take this opportunity to introduce you to Ted Anderson, who is uh, not just a big sponsor on Genesis uh, Communications Network, but an officer of Genesis Communications Network, and who is uh, very, very much involved in gold and silver. Ted, it's good to have you with us today. Well, it's certainly a pleasure to be with you, Harry. Um, I just uh, want to say real quick, I really have I've been reading your stuff and, and following your information going all the way back to the 1970s, and it seems to me that you've stuck with this plan with the four places to put your money and having that balanced portfolio. Going way back to a hard rough seminar that uh, actually I didn't attend, but I, read, I listened to the tapes on and you were one of the speakers. Oh, that was, was a long time ago. Yeah. Yes, the, the concept uh, began in a very rough stage in, uh, and was introduced in a book in 1978. And then in 1981, a further book really did refine the concept to what it is now. But in 1986, I was able to simplify it to the four investments, and no changes have been made since then, except for ways of implementing those four investments. I've found better ways, just like this bond fund that suddenly came on the market. But you're here to talk about precious metals. Well, yeah, I think it's time to talk about precious metals. We certainly have been seeing the oil prices going up at the pumps and so on, and uh, and. The foreign uh, the the foreign investors that you know I mean the the United States dollar is losing uh, um, ground against the euro and uh, so the world economy right now is kind of turning away from the United States dollar. Harry, I just was wondering your opinion. I mean, do you think that the United States could ever become uh, like uh, uh, Britain did, where it's no longer the world exchange, uh, the currency, the United States. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, things come and go in this world. It's just that we don't know the timing of them. You know, so, the, so often it looks like the world's going to come to an end tomorrow, but instead the sun comes out and everything seems to be all right. But that doesn't mean that the threat that made one think that the world was going to come to an end tomorrow, that that threat is non-existent. It's just that we don't know the timing of things. Uh, something terrible could happen next week, or it might not happen for 10 years. Uh, we can explore that further when we come back from this break. We're talking with Ted Anderson of Midas Resources, and uh, we will be back right after these words. You can join the fund by calling with a question or a comment for Ted at 1-800-259-9231. That's one 800 Two five nine nine two three one, and we will be right back. This is Harry Brown. You've worked too hard for your savings to risk them on somebody's grand plan to double them. Wouldn't you rather have a safe, secure portfolio, one that grows steadily each year without the wide swings in the investment markets? For 25 years, I've shown people how to have such a portfolio, one that made money the past few years rather than losing heavily. Now you can get that same help from my book, Fail Safe Investing. 
you can have that secure, bulletproof portfolio. You can download Failsafe Investing at LibertyFree.com for only $9.75. Then read it on your computer screen or print it out and read it in your easy chair. The book can give you the security you crave without becoming a speculator or a market whiz. Go to LibertyFree.com to read a sample chapter and then start protecting your savings. Failsafe Investing can be yours tonight at LibertyFree.com. Well, welcome back. This is Harry Brown, and we're talking today with Ted Anderson, who is the founder and president of Genesis Communications Network, and I'm very, very pleased that this network has come into existence. It is certainly uh, the most libertarian network that I'm familiar with, and so you get viewpoints here that you don't get on other networks. But Ted is also the president of Midas Resources, uh, an outfit that sells gold and silver coins, and so he's here today to talk about the precious metals. And, Ted, uh, uh, you started to talk about the, the fall of the dollar, and uh, I take that that is one of the reasons that you think gold is poised for an uptrend now. Uh, why don't you continue with that and the other reasons that you see to be bullish on gold right now? Well, Harry, I mean, just today I picked up the Star and Tribune, and there was an article talking about inflation coming back. And, you know, usually, you know, in the years past, we haven't seen that kind of thing, not in a long time. And, uh, the, of course, the oil prices, we were talking about that a little bit earlier. But uh, one of the things that I see that's going on is that uh, is the, the United States citizen has taken on an awful lot of debt. As a matter of fact, savings, I think, is down to 1% now. It's really very low. Um, the, uh, um, the credit card bankruptcies are obviously hitting all-time highs, almost doubled from a couple of years ago. And uh, you take a look at that compounding. I mean, right now, I mean, the Federal Reserve System is raising the interest rates, but I believe that a lot of the reason why they're doing that is because of the fact that there are a lot of foreigners that are getting away from the U.S. currency, and they want to attract people back in again. One of the ways to do that, obviously, is to raise interest rates to sell those bonds you were talking about. Yes, and the act of uh, raising interest rates is really uh, the act of, contracting the money, si money supply, not necessarily contracting it, but slowing the growth in the money supply in hopes that that would increase interest rates and at the same time do something to dampen inflation by, because inflation is a monetary phenomena, uh, phenomenon. And if uh, you're not uh, increasing the money supply as fast as you were before, then inflation should either slow down or stop altogether. So, uh, obviously, they're worried about inflation. But but what that does still, I mean, the last uh, year or so, we had uh, an economic, still some economic growth, but not a tremendous amount. And, uh, and to me, I'm thinking, well, you know, the Federal Reserve System right now could still be thinking we should, you know, bring down the unemployment numbers and still stimulate the economy. But I think that there's that second little equation that falls in there is that the foreign currencies are becoming more strong, uh, especially the euro, and the United States dollar is losing purchasing power, which is obviously a translation. You were, you were talking about inflation. Inflation is what that is. The dollar is losing purchasing power by less goods and services. Um, with that particular scenario at hand, if you start raising the interest rates, you start stalling the economy even further. And I just happened to notice also when I was bruising, breezing through the Star and Tribune that the uh, Help Wanted at section isn't quite as fat and thick as it once was just to meet, you know, within the last couple of years. It seems to me that there's still a slow economy out there, and there's cause for stimulation, uh, not necessarily... Uh, you know, cutting back on the uh, you know cutting back on the interest rates, and then of course with this great big uh, I don't know how it is in your part of the country, but in Minnesota, housing uh, costs have gone up incredibly, mm -hmm. and uh, 
and and there's a lot of people that have gone into financing their homes further on and uh, stimulating the economy that way. So there's just a lot of things that are going on right now that would cause me to say, hey, listen, you might want to take a look at this thing. There's a few cracks in the in the in the uh, cement of this economy, and uh, you might want to just make sure that you have that one part of your portfolio that you're describing, uh, the precious metals. Yes, and there are people who look at gold and say, well, it hasn't done anything for the last 20 years. Why should I buy it now? Why don't I wait until it uh, goes into a bull market again? But, of course, uh, a bull market starts, or you you think a bull market starts, or maybe you don't think it is. Maybe you think, well, I better wait because this is might just be a blip and it will go back down again. And then the next thing you know, gold is already up about 40 or 50 percent, and you still haven't bought. And then you think, well, now it's too late because uh, it's already gone up this much. Uh, I don't know how much further it can go, so I think maybe I just better back off. And you wind up missing it entirely. And so my advice, of course, is to have all four of those components of the portfolio, stocks, bonds, gold, and cash, filled immediately. It's a package, and if you don't have part of that It isn't really a package anymore. You don't have the safety. But a couple of things I need to comment on that you mentioned. When you say the Star and Tribune, I just want everybody to know you're talking about the Minneapolis Star and Tribune, not the star that you buy at the grocery store. No, (laughs) no. At at the checkout counter. It's not the tabloid. No, it's (laughs) right. That's that's the big paper here in Minneapolis. I realize the Star and Tribune, and there's other ones too, but. You know, but all, all throughout Minnesota, I imagine people read the Star and Tribune. Yeah, sure is. It's it's the big paper here. And um, and the other thing is that the uh, the the Fed may want to dampen inflation by raising interest rates, but that doesn't mean they'll be successful. I mean, the, the federal government hasn't won the war on drugs after 30 years. It hasn't won the war on poverty. It hasn't won the war on Iraq. There's no reason to think that Alan Greenspan, as a federal uh, employee is any more capable of winning the war against inflation uh, than the uh, uh, Defense Department is capable of uh, bringing peace to the Middle East or uh, anybody in the federal government is capable of keeping drugs out of the country. Government simply doesn't succeed. So the fact that Greenspan seems to be concerned about inflation now doesn't mean that he's going to succeed in putting a damper on it. Uh, Ed, uh, Ted, uh, let's go to the phones because uh, Ed's been waiting on the phone. And um, no, I'm sorry. Let's let me back off of that. I realize as I look at the clock, we're going to be taking a break shortly. So if Ed will hang on, then Ted, uh, you you wanted to make another comment, I think. Well, I just you know right now at this particular time, um, there's just an incredible amount of debt. Credit card debt is up there, real high. Um, there's a lot of bankruptcies going on, and I think we ought to talk a little bit about the, you know, the solidity or how solid the banking system is, that kind of thing, and and uh, why the why there are some good reasons to take a look at precious metals at this time. Maybe we'll talk about that after the break. Sure, um, and there uh, again, I have to say that uh, a lot of these things that are seem to be indicators today. Uh, could have been looked at as strong indicators five or ten years ago. But still, uh, I say that if you don't have gold in your portfolio, then you are strongly exposed uh, to some really dangerous consequences that might occur. When you get into a full-fledged inflation, gold is the only thing in the portfolio, my portfolio, that works. Uh, Inflation is very bad for stocks. And uh, during an inflation, interest rates go up of their own accord, which is very bad for bonds, and it's very bad for cash. So gold is the only thing that would have protected you during the 1970s, for instance. So you do need to have that in the portfolio. And Ted will give us some more uh, reasons why when we come back. And we will talk with Ed in Kentucky, not to be confused with Ted in Minnesota. This is Harry Brown. The phone number is one 800 259 9231 or you can email me question at harrybrown.org we will be right back this is harry brown my book fail safe investing will tell you what you need to know to create your own bulletproof investment portfolio one that will protect you whatever the future brings, prosperity, inflation, recession, even depression. And it will protect you without your having to predict the future or tinker with the portfolio. 
best news of all, at libertyfree.com, you can download the book for only $9.75. That's right, just nine seventy-five. You can read the book on your computer screen or print it out and read it in your easy chair. If you're tired of losing money on your investments, tired of the pressure of looking for the best investments, here's the way to have your own bulletproof portfolio, no matter how big or small your savings. To get a free sample chapter from Failsafe Investing, just go to libertyfree.com right now. That's libertyfree.com. Well, that happy music will serve to introduce Ed, who is in Kentucky and has a question or a comment. Uh, good afternoon, Ed. Yes, how are you, Mr. Brown? Just fine. Sorry to uh, keep you waiting. Oh, it's okay. I've, I've followed the permanent portfolio right about from the beginning, and I have to say that I'm happy that I did know a little bit about it because it worked out just ex- about exactly as you say it does. Now, uh, I've been delaying and really balancing recently in the last year or two uh, in purchasing the gold portion of the portfolio. Are you you saying that uh, market prices have uh, caused the the percentages in the portfolio to change so that now gold is is underinvested now? That's right. Okay. And uh, I I came across a pretty good article yesterday, and I can't think of the author's name, but it was, I think, if I pronounce it correctly, the counter teeth or wave theory. He, oh. He's more concerned about uh, right now about deflation than inflation, and there's a possibility of either way. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that's what's been holding me up. I keep thinking that things are going to get worse instead of better. Uh, well, roughly, uh, what is the percentage that you have in gold now? Can you uh, tell offhand? Uh, I, 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 it's down to about ten percent. Oh, oh, that is low. Generally speaking, as long as all four portions are 15% or more or 35% or less, you don't need to rebalance, but you're down to 10%. And I'm thinking about speculation, and you think things are going to drop, but you never... I know just how you'd answer that question, because I've read you so much, that it's, you shouldn't wait, you should just balance. And yes, of course, but let me also add that this inflation versus deflation argument has been going on for 25 years, and people who said 10 years ago that you ought to get into gold in a hurry have nothing on the people who 15, 20 years ago said that the country was about to see the bottom fall out and we were going to have a huge deflation. And, in fact, there are people way back in the 70s that I can remember in the hard money movement saying that was true, that the banks were about to close, you know, the whole works. So uh, you just simply cannot rely on all of these forecasts. You need to take them into consideration only to make sure that if the forecast were to come true, you'd be covered. And you would be covered with a permanent portfolio because bonds would do sensationally if the person who wrote that article turned out to be correct. In the 1930s, the uh, yield on long-term bonds dropped to 1%. 1%. If that were to happen again today... Uh, bonds would double, triple, or quadruple in price. And, and they keep going up. Uh, it's amazing how they've done. Who would ever think that bonds would carry the portfolio as well as they have? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just you simply do not know. You need to take into consideration uh, these various opinions that you come across only to make sure that you are covered in the event that what the the person is predicting uh, were to come true. And if you have the four-way portfolio and you do have adequate percentages in each of the four investments, then you are covered for these predictions. You are covered for deflation, but you are not covered for inflation because gold Gold is the only thing that would carry the portfolio up in an inflation, just as bonds are the only thing that would hold it up in a deflation. You know, Harry, can I just add add to that? Yes, by all means. Hey, Ed, one of the things that happened, too, in the 1930s as well is that, you know, the U.S. Treasury bonds obviously did very well. Some of the corporate bonds were defaulted on, and that just is a reality, and that's why I think it's a good idea that Harry is recommending the U.S. bonds. But gold itself did double in price. It was at $26 an ounce. And Franklin D. Roosevelt posted it at $36 an ounce, not too far after he confiscated it in 1933. Yeah, no, well, we, need, we, we need to realize, though, Ted, that that was a political uh, 
a political decision because Henry Wallace sold him on the idea that if you raise the price of gold, then farm prices would go up, and it didn't work. And that that only did uh, seem to be a political option because gold was fixed at twenty dollars and sixty seven cents. It is not fixed today, and there's nothing uh, the Treasury could do that would be comparable to that today. So uh, a lot of people look at gold stocks and say, hey, gold stocks went up during the 1930s. Well, of course they did because of that political decision. But now that we're no longer on the gold standard, uh, the government's in, uh, no longer in a position to do that, although it still is in a position to confiscate gold. So it is important that you protect the gold that you get. Okay. Ed, Ed, did you want to uh, respond to what was said? Uh, yep. uh, no, I, I certainly agree that the, you, you have a method where you have the, a correct mix and you certainly don't have to do the worrying that I'm doing. I'm not balanced yet. If you think it's bad about the gold, I only have about 6% now in the bond port portion. <laughs> portion. So, you know, I'm right there. I have to do something, and I'm hesitating. Well, I can't even say you have a semi-permanent portfolio. <laughs> well, you know, I've let it, you know, I've, uh, I've just changed that way, and I'm delaying in, the, in balancing, and it's a mistake. It's yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. I, I just because can't think of it. I'm so cautious that I think Treasury bills are safer, but you don't get any interest at all. Yeah, I, I can't just have run out of words. I can't think of any more words to prod you with, to, but you really need to, to okay. get that thing balanced. One question now. Yes. We've talked about gold, and you used to say that there's a mutual fund called, that was the Benham Target Maturity Trust, 2015. And I, that's what I've used. And it's, it's worked fine, but I haven't heard you talking about it recently. That it's well, a possibility I, if you want to cut down your bond portion. A little bit more volatile, but it works the same way. Yeah, I, I, when I had a newsletter, I mentioned that as an alternative, but it's not something I would recommend. I really would prefer, since you're going to have to, to bring your bond portion up, I would prefer that you either get that mutual fund that I mentioned, the uh, Lehman Fund, and I'm glad glad this came up because I've forgotten to put the link up, which I will. Or either do that or buy the bonds directly. And it's very simple. You just call a stockbroker. Any stockbroker can get the bonds Maybe for it. Maybe it's time for me to do that. But... Yeah, I, I really think it is. Ed, thanks so much for calling and uh, raising these questions. Uh, Ted, was there anything you wanted to say before we go to the break? No, I, uh, I'm I'm just glad we're able to talk about this particular thing on the uh, the uh, um, you know the bonds obviously have done really well with the interest rates coming down. Uh, Ed's probably I'm guessing in an equity position. Is that where you're at with the stocks? Or well, he must be very very strong in cash. He said that he was heavy in T bills, and he probably is fully committed in the stocks. By fully committed, I mean having 25 percent of the portfolio. But uh, it must be the cash that's uh, very strong in contrast to the very little bit of bonds and gold that he's holding. And that, doesn't, it, doesn't it kind of frighten you that the interest rates might come up and long bonds will lose purchasing power? Well, if, the, if they do, it will be because of inflation. And if that happens, then gold will be carrying the portfolio. Uh, the nice thing about the permanent portfolio concept is that the winners are always more powerful than the losers. Uh, the losers lose 15, 20, 25, 30 percent. The winners gain 50, 100 percent or more. And as a result, one winning investment is all you need in the portfolio to offset the losses that may be, be, to be occurring in all three of the other investments. And that's, that's what's made the portfolio so stable over the last 25 years. We will be right back in just a couple of minutes, and this is Harry Brown. We're talking with Ted Anderson, and Bob in Alabama is waiting on the phone. And beyond Bob, we won't have time to take any more calls, so I don't want to encourage you to call now. But do stay tuned, because there's a lot more to come. This is Harry Brown. We'll be right back.
Well, welcome back. This is Harry Brown. We're talking with Ted Anderson, the president of Midas Resources, a precious metals company. And, uh, Ted, I'm being a very, very, very inhospitable host today. I have not asked you for your phone number where people can get in touch with Midas Resources if they would like to purchase gold and silver or gold or silver for their portfolio. So let's start with that. Well, of course, if you're looking for the precious metals, we handle the coins, and you can catch us at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. And here and I were talking about the uh, Oh Yeah book, and uh, you had, you, uh, I'm really yeah, glad yeah. you had a chance to read it. It's really kind of fun reading. Yes, uh, we were talking about it off the air. Uh, Ted is making available a reprint of a book that came out in the 1930s called Ed, called Oh Yeah, with a question mark after it, and it was written by Edward Angley, and it quoted all the things that people were saying in the 1920s uh, through 1929 about how sound the economy was and uh, the country was now depression-proof and oh, on and on and on. It's a terrific book. I, I read it back in the early 1970s. And, uh, Ted, you're giving copies of it away? You yeah. reprinted it? Yeah, I reprinted it, and you can call us at 1-800-686-2237. And you can get a copy of it. It's really kind of fun to see what uh, Herbert Hoover was saying. And, and uh, <laughs> Ford, uh, that's Henry Ford, and, uh, you know, the uh, Rockefellers. And everybody was saying that this country was completely inflation-proof and the economy was booming. And we entered into a new age and a new era. And it, was, it really kind of makes you chuckle. Yeah, it is, it is a lot of fun to read that book. Uh, all right, uh, we, we're getting close to the end of the show, so we need to get Bob in Alabama in here because he's been waiting on the phone. Uh, good afternoon, Bob. Hi, Harry. What's Hi. up today? Well, I was uh, uh, looking at the uh, permanent portfolio fund um, on the Internet here, I'm looking at a chart of it, <clears throat> and it looks like around January of 2001 or so, the, the fund uh, decidedly, uh, took a course north. I mean, it's really started to take off around that time. Do you think, uh, or what do you attribute that growth to? Was it the increased price of gold? Well, I think that it was that, uh, it may have been that there was a move upward in gold, and uh, Ted might be uh, have a better memory about that than I do, but I do know that bonds were doing well then, even those stocks were in a very bad situation. And the, it was a time when the permanent portfolio concept or the permanent portfolio fund proved its mettle because most people were heavily in stocks and in 1999 would have told you that that's the place to be. And then here in 2000, 2001, and 2002, uh, stocks dropped over that three-year period almost a third. And uh, but the permanent portfolio continued to increase in price. It's uh, it has three advantages. First of all, safety. You know you're protected from this terrible things that might happen if we had runaway inflation or a full out deflation. Secondly, it is stable, and that means that whatever the conditions are, you still get that growth, that moderate growth. And in, when you do have the odd losing year, which in my portfolio there have been four of in the last thirty years. The worst that is going to happen is you're going to lose about 6%, as I did in 1981, but usually the loss is like 1% or 2%. And so you get that stability. And third, it's simple. Whether you invest in the fund or just get the four investments for yourself, simple enough that it doesn't overwhelm you and you aren't uh, you know, drowning in paperwork and everything else trying to keep track of it. So, uh, anyway, uh, Ted, was there a blip upward in 2001? Do you happen to remember? 2001 for gold, you mean? Or for, uh, yeah, for gold, yeah. Well, you just said it exactly how it happened, Harry. I mean, we had the stock market crumbling. Uh, the, um, the market and the bonds were just great because interest rates are coming down. And gold came up from about 200, I think it was at the bottom of about 248. And what are we at now, about three or 230? Uh, I'm sorry, 430 right now. Yes, 455. So obviously, yeah, in that balanced portfolio, like you're talking about, the uh, gold and also the bonds are the, were the winners here the last few years. Yeah, uh, you, yeah, you've had a really a, a four-year bull market in gold, but yet it is not the kind of bull market we had in the 70s. So it, what I 
the reason I mention that is because it means that we haven't necessarily seen the end of gold, that we may see something far, far greater in gold in the next few years than we have seen over the last four years. I'm not predicting that. I'm just saying that it is entirely possible. Uh, Bob, are we answering your question? Well, yeah, sort of. I, uh, I, I should have been more specific. I see from January about 2001 till now it has gone up significantly, mm-hmm. and uh, much more than in the, in the prior uh, period from, say, 1988 all the way up until uh, you know 2001. There was about a 25% increase in the fund over that period of time. But since that period of time, it's gone up uh, 60 you know, sixty, seventy percent, and and I'm just wondering what what has happened really in the past four years that would have have influenced it so much more than the prior, uh, you know, twenty. Yeah, I think that during the twenty years starting in 1980, you didn't have one thing strongly pulling the whole portfolio upward. Also, should mention that that twenty five percent increase is not adjusting the price for dividends the actual increase in value was a lot more thanks so much for the call bob and we'll be back to wind this up in just a couple of minutes folks but don't go away and listen to these important messages this is harry brown have you lost money in stocks over the past few years from 2000 through 2002 the stock market lost a third of its value But during those three years, a bulletproof portfolio gained 9%. And over the past 34 years, such a portfolio gained an average of over 9% per year throughout periods of prosperity, inflation, and recession with no wide swings in value. My book, Failsafe Investing, shows how you can have that kind of portfolio for yourself. And now you can download the book for only $9.75. You don't have to rely on alleged market wizards or stay up late worrying about your savings. Failsafe Investing will show you how to have the security that you crave. Go to libertyfree.com to see a sample chapter of Failsafe Investing and then start protecting the savings you've worked so hard to acquire. That's libertyfree.com. Well, welcome back. I was, first of all, so I catch you before we run out of time, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, we're here every Sunday afternoon, and we talk about any aspect of money or the economy that seems to be relevant at the moment, and always welcome your questions or comments. And uh, we've been talking today with Ted Anderson, the president of Midas Resources, a place where you can get gold and silver coins and a place that uh, if you call for information, you can get a copy of that Edward Angley book, Oh Yeah? And uh, I think you'll enjoy reading it. And there is information, there is education in it also because it teaches you, I think, a little to be a little more skeptical than perhaps you've been in the past. Ted, thanks so much for being with us today. Is there any final thoughts you'd like to give us? Well, I just want to say, Harry, I mean, the book kind of brings around the whole idea why the balance portfolio is so important. Um, and, uh, and, and I just, you know, if you get a chance, give me a call at 1-800-686-2237 and pick up that Oh Yeah book and you'll see. I mean, the, the economists today are, you know, they'll tell you the same thing. Everything's going to be great. Everything's wonderful. There's things that can happen in the economies that obviously change things. And uh, we've certainly seen it all over Europe and uh, South America and uh, here in the United States with the U.S. dollar and competing with, competing with the, uh, the uh, euro. Uh, we seen what happened to the British pound when the United States dollar became so powerful. Yes, civilizations come and go, <laughs> reserve currencies come and go, and uh, uh, the world changes. And that's why you do need to, to be protected against anything, and gold is a very, very important part of that. Ted, I really appreciate your uh, taking the time, your Sunday afternoon, uh, to visit with us today, and I wish you well, and I also want to thank you so much for creating the Genesis Communications Network. I think people are getting an awful lot of information on this network that they just simply wouldn't get from cable TV or talk radio. 
Well, I thank you for having me up, Harry, and, I'm, and I want to say that uh, the listeners have been great and very supportive, and I'm glad that they appreciate the network as well. Yes. All right, and folks, I want to make that a little a reminder that there are many, many shows on this network that uh, may be of interest to you, and if you go to the Genesis website, uh, you can see a schedule of the shows and descriptions of the shows, and I think you might find some other shows you enjoy. And there's, then there's, you know, there's, there, there, there's, there's one on Saturday night that you might like. It comes on at 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock uh, Central, 8 o'clock Mountain, and 7 o'clock Pacific, and that's uh, the Saturday evening libertarian conversation with yours truly. Two hours where we talk about political and social matters, and again, uh, I think it's very, very important to present ideas that you don't hear elsewhere. Uh, you are just simply not going to hear on that show what you've heard on Hannity and Combs or O'Reilly or on Larry King Live or any of these other shows. So tune in there, and don't forget to come back next week because uh, we're going to be right here. So come back. Come back now. This is Harry Brown. Bye-bye. <laughs>